Rakuman. Uh, nothing to do with Pokemon. And right there, I lost half of the viewers on this video, but so be it. Rakuman is a free print and play game. You can find the files online and you can make your own copy, but there is also a professionally printed copy and this is the one that I played and the one that I'm showing you in this video. Rakuman is a simple, fairly abstract two-player game and the way the rulebook describes it almost makes it sound like six mini games but it's also described as that's the way you learn the game so you think okay mini game number six is the full game I would almost say it, it's a box with six mini games that you can play in order actually there's a way of playing them in order as sort of like mini campaigns so that by winning a scenario um, well, you score points but you also give advantages to the other player that will try then to get back uh, at you for in the following scenario so you can play them that way or you can just play any of the six mini games as its own in this video I'm gonna show you I'm gonna tell you about mini games three and four which to me feel like that's that's the real thing <laughs> that's the main thing at least those are the mini games that I or the version of the game that I liked the most and that I played uh, most often uh, with my daughters mainly. I also played them, however, with an adult friend. Uh, I know, late pandemic, we, I have an adult friend fully vaccinated and from time to time we play games, kind of breaking the rules a little bit. Oh, dearie. Anyways, Rock Human. It comes with these uh, discs here, you shuffle them at the beginning of the game and then you place them in a random configuration. Well, configuration is three by four, you just don't know exactly where uh, the tiles of different colors are going to be. Each player has a clan represented by these discs, one player has five discs and the other player has four on the other side they re they represent warriors with a numerical value as you probably can imagine a uh, higher value usually wins the player with fewer tokens has better warriors with the exception that the player with this clan here has, has two ones but a one has a star and the one with a star kills the six so the six will usually win unless those uh, the, 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 that six killer token is out there so so these are usually better warriors but you're fewer of them and no token no warrior is actually fully invincible the idea of the game is this, you win if you have three of your tokens in a straight line, which means either they are alone in a space or they are on top of a column like that. Or you win if you have three of your own tokens in a single stack like that, you also win if there is a situation on the board uh, that where the opponent is fully trapped, they cannot do anything the next turn they win the game. But by far, by far, the most common victory that I've seen is three in a row. Now, players will alternate taking turns. When it is your turn, you must take an action if you can. If you cannot, you just lost the game. For an action, you can deploy, which is you take a disc from your pool and you can look at, the, at your own discs and choose the value. You take a disc from your own pool and you place it in an empty space. That's it. It has to be empty. And so I go like this and then my opponent goes like that and like this and like this. We're deploying. We're deploying like crazy. So it has to be an empty spot. Or instead of deploying as your action for the turn, you can move. When you move, you take one of your discs, which are not under another disc of an opponent of your own so you take a disc which is not under another disc it can be on top of another disc you take a disc which is not on top of another disc and you move it to a location of the opposite color so from the sort of like light blue to this tile color brick bronze whatever it is so from here i could move here or i could move here or I could move here. I could not move to a tile of the same color. And so we did all the deploying. Now we're gonna do some moving. Well, this player, ah, the player could move. Uh, when you move, you can jump to an empty spot. You can jump on top of another piece, regardless of the owner. 
you cannot jump off top of a tower with two pieces unless they are both yours. And by the way, if you paid attention, that means that you just won the game because you made a stack of three. So, for example, this player now deploys, this player deploys. We're talking about moving, let's move. Now, this player moves here, for example. And then this player decides to move, because we're moving, we're and so we move there. And then I deploy there. Ooh, that's bad, because that player now is going to win. And so I got to do something. And so, for example, from here... I jump here because I'm jumping from collar to collar, blocking that uh, situation, but like so. So that's the that's the general idea for those actions. Another action you can take uh, introducing mini game number three is to fight, which is you choose a stack that already has two tokens in it. You declare a fight there, and, you, and the tokens have to be of the opposite clans, and you reveal them. And whoever has the highest wins. And so, for example, in this case, black wins. And the token that was defeated is returned to the supply of the, of the owning player. Um, suppose, for example, that that was the case. That that was the case. And there's a fight there. Red wins. So this is returned by revealing that situation. Then red wins. And basically, pretty much every situation in which you reveal three in a row makes the uh, the play with three in a row win. If, for example, now black was for whatever reason going to move there, then they would also reveal three in a row, and the opponent would win. So we got deploy, we got move, we got fight. That would win, but you know, you get the idea. There is one more action introducing mini game number four, which is to surprise each player has a token, which is also a reminder of who controls red or black clan. Uh, with the surprise action, if you play the version with the surprise. What you do is you can take it once per game to indicate that you took that action, you flip that face down. The surprise action allows you to move a token, meaning a, a, a space, a token representing a space, from where it is to another location as long as it touches at least two other locations. And that's it. You take it once per, per game, which is enough because usually when you take it is because you win. Like in this case, oh, too bad that black had, had already won. There you go. If this is the situation, I use that token like that. I move that space. Booyah, and I win. And when you win, when, when you move it, of course, you need to respect the grid. It has to touch at least two other spaces. You can't make it weird like this because that just looks too strange. So, in these mini games uh, that I played, uh, I played the game with the actions of moving, uh, of deploying, moving, and fighting or the other mini game that also includes a surprise action. And again, there are the variants, you can find all the files online so you can read them. But this is in general, uh, are some of the main mini games, some of the main versions of Rakuman, and definitely the ones that they played the most. So, it's a very simple game, as you can see, it also has a Soiter variant, but I haven't tried it, because it's such a simple game that even in times of pandemic, I find players at home. I played with my daughters, with the 8-year-old and the 10-year-old, and they both enjoyed it, and I think, and I enjoyed it also. I'll tell you this, sometimes light is right, sometimes simplicity uh, is elegance. I didn't think that I learned much about the history of Japan. I never thought that this was a war game. It remains a very simple, very light abstract game um, with that element of, of Stratego, maybe because of the, of the bluffing of place in the numerical values. But it's pretty good. I think it's a game that is so light and so simple, and yet it's just a rather impressive, you know, way of showing you what you can do with just a bunch of tokens, a bunch of discs, and a bunch of tiles representing spaces. Because it's so simple, but there is some depth to it. There's definitely is some depth and some elegance, and you will find yourself in most cases 
uh, feeling this game is stupid because it's so obvious what the next move will be. But then you realize that uh, the obvious move then opens the opportunity to somebody else and then you take something that is less obvious and then the opponent does a move that seemed obvious but is maybe not, etc, etc, etc. If good gaming is uh, having tough decisions to make, there's a good game because the decisions are less obvious than they may look at first. Like, you know, the first is like, this game is broken, I put this, and I and the opponent puts the, the token there, and I put there, boom, I won. And then you realize that there are more wrinkles to it, more things that you can do, more things than, than happen uh, at first. I would say, play three times, not once, not twice, Play three times, uh, I think you can jump in in the mini game that I gave you originally, the one with deploy, move or fight, and to me that's really where the game shines. Uh, I think you'll, you may be surprised as I was, I thought it was going to be a five minute filler to play with my daughters, uh, and that was it. And it is a five minute filler to play with my daughters, but that's not it, because there is more fun to be had here. There are just situations in which um, I thought I had it, I had seen it all, I've seen all that could happen, and my idea role surprised me, and then now I'm thinking and wondering. There's the bluffing element, which is also really good. I'm opening right there, booyah, is that a strong piece, is that a weak piece? Does it matter? Uh, it really might, because then later that may be a piece that uh, I'm gonna use. Uh, I'm gonna use to try to win, and so that's important because if I go there, and then if I go there, then of course, uh, whether I go there or not, black side may win by placing something there. So really now one good way for me to try to break that situation to prevent black from winning next turn would be to declare a fight there. But will I win? So maybe there is a safer way to do it that also breaks that preventing uh, black from winning there. Actually if I place it there and now black declares a fight and they lose then, uh, then red wins. So there are just interesting reversals of fortune that come out almost out of nowhere, and that's and that's the beauty, almost out of nowhere, because you realize ah, this could happen, this could not happen. You can predict a lot, but not everything. So I don't feel that you can solve the game, at least if you can, I haven't. And to me, that that that's really a nice Goldilocks area because the rules are so simple, and you feel that you have good control but not perfect control. You have decisions that are tough, but not paralyzing. And so that's that's nice, good, elegant gaming in my opinion. I enjoy the version also with the surprise action, but it's annoying because everybody who takes it always says surprise, and that just uh, gets old. But most importantly, sometimes with that Surprise version! It feels a bit anticlimactic because then it does feel like sometimes victory comes out of nowhere. You could have maybe predicted it, but you're playing a five minute game and you weren't considering really everything. And so with the, with that option, which I'm not going to mention again because it gets annoying, uh, with that option, sometimes it does feel a little bit anticlimactic. Like, oh, okay. Uh, yes, you win. Oh, I didn't see that. Sometimes like, oh! I win it and realize that, as opposed to the version where you just as have those three actions, move, deploy, or fight, then you do feel that, you know, when you win, when you lose, it matters because it really comes from your strategy as opposed to uh, just something, somebody noticing something that they overlooked. And again, it, the game does feel anticlimactic though, it's only five minutes, play it again. And you will find that the game is pretty addictive because, yeah, okay, I'll play it once more. Again, I play with my daughters, but then I also play with an adult friend who came over to play games. Uh, he's a mathematician and he seemed to be enjoying this game, enjoying it. So it's a game that definitely, and he's a pretty hardcore gamer, so as 
it re does Rakuman, nothing to do with Pokemon, does remain a uh, light Asha game, but I think it has enough meat to be a filler that is entertaining also for committed gamers. At least for this one, who's talking right now, giving you this reader review, uh, I enjoyed it. I think it's a perfectly fine, perfectly legitimate, perfectly enjoyable light filler with more meat, more decisions, more angles to it that definitely appears at first or even a second sight. Give it a couple of tries and it may be sure a light game, sure an abstract game, but one that you would enjoy. In the category of five minute abstract fillers, this definitely is, this definitely is a, a strong specimen, a strong specimen in that category. That's a good game, what can I say?